Well, the growth um, had been fairly steady for a few decades. It really peaked in the sort of after World War II up till about 1960, and then it was fairly steady. And in the 90s, um, a number of things, I think, accounted for it. Um, the biggest one was the incredible um, amount of wealth being created in um, the, the late 1990s. And we done a little uh, deeper dive with the Foundation Center and looked at that 45% of the foundation grant making is coming from individuals who are still alive and they're using their family foundations as a tool for their philanthropy. And in a lot of cases, it was, and I think more cases, it was just the want, need to want to do this with your family and then have some plan for spending out. And for some of those same donors, I think they wanted to find a topic that really interested them and then put all of their energies into that topic in a, in a period of time. Well, my Uncle Dick, Richard C. Monroe, he started it um, before he died, like, like right in 1989-1990. Dick had always been a big community activist, whether it was the library or theater or Emory or other at-risk at groups. He had always been very involved. And he had envisioned it as being something that he and his sons would do over time and they would all get used to it. But then Dick died the very next year. He funded it quite well. Um, uh, I think he left about, we started off with just under $2 million. There's something we really resonate to about the notion that our grandchildren's grandchildren will be sitting around the table and they'll be um, doing, you know, this giving and sort of with our legacy, you know, out in front of them. It's a wonderful way to hold family together is to continue passing down to the newer and newer generation's responsibility for getting involved with the foundation. And it also passes on a family mindset of how you should be with community. But we've really seen the ideas around perpetuity changing. Some people affirming that this is what they want and others saying, you know, maybe not. It's a way to build cohesion within a family, especially after a lot of the older generation dies off and to maintain a community legacy. One of the responsibilities you have in that is to understand and be faithful to the founding intentions. But how do you adapt those for changing times and circumstances? How do you take someone who may have been interested in an issue that's not an issue anymore? We're a very big family foundation, but it was a family that started. Um, and the arts were always important to William and Flora, um, classical music in particular. Support for the arts goes back to the beginning at the foundation. There's a historic commitment from um, the board and from the program's inception. When we looked at each other and we said, where's the real need? At-risk communities, the very young, the very old. And that's where we center most of our giving around, not that there aren't exceptions.